Brad's an associate dean at the School of Education and Human Development at CU Denver, where Lisa works. And um, Brad's also one of the founders of Think Studios. And Brad posted on the Professors of Play listserv one day, for those that might remember it, this cool technique. So we called Brad and said, hey, Brad, um, play connects people. We talk about connection formers. Can you come talk about the Zub Goldberg machine? An amazing illustration, deliberate illustration of how to connect students. So Brad, take it away. All right, I gotta get the screen going. Can everyone hear me? We can. Are we good, are we solid? Yes. Light, spotlight or whatever. Um, wonderful. Okay, so I talk a lot, so I'm really trying to watch the timer. I'm gonna count on Lisa and Dave to give me the signals if I'm rambling, because I do that. Um, and, you know, I kind of prepared a, a slide deck and then I thought, you know, I don't know if I want to do that because I like to wing it quite a bit. So I'm still going to, I'm still going to do that. Who here uh, knows what a Rube Goldberg machine is? Does anyone care to, without me calling anyone out vis-a-vis -vis Dave, anyone care to throw out a, a quick definition, a quick explanation for anyone who may not know? I think it's like a series of contraptions where one piece will cause something to happen in the next piece and cause like kind of like a domino effect but with other objects yes that's a great explanation anyone else want to add to that i would say an overly complex process to do a simple task absolutely you guys i think you've got it so the the impetus for this was actually a television show so let me back up and then I'll tell you, my story is all out of whack. So um, I teach a course at the University of Colorado, Denver, uh, called Digital Storytelling and Learning. Um, it's obviously about digital storytelling, but underneath the hood, it's really about um, digital literacy and um, uh, digital culture and copyright and storytelling tropes and all these things, kind of, kind of the, the internet culture all wrapped into one. So in addition to our study about theory and concept, students have basically, we use a challenge-based pedagogy. So they have a challenge bank and they are able to go into this bank and they, they can create micro stories every week using audio, video, web, or data or any kind of media. So in addition to our study, they're constantly crafting, making, creating what I call little micro stories. And so, yeah, it's like mousetrap. I see someone wrote that. That's exactly what a Rube Goldberg is. And so in, you know, when we were peak pandemic last year, I was teaching this class and we're the school of education. And so a lot of our, a lot of our students are K-12 teachers who were going through their own stress, trying to teach online for the first time ever at a variety of grade levels. So, that, you know, it was a high stress level for everyone, including this class. And so we wanted, it's a fun, playful class anyway. And we wanted to do something um, really different. We came up with the Zoom Goldberg machine. So I'll share my screen, talk a little further. I'm trying to move fast because I ramble. Can you guys see my screen? Okay, there was the presentation that I'm not giving today. So you're welcome for that. Um, Rube Goldberg machine. You got started with uh, an inventor and an animator way back in the day who actually got famous for these political style cartoons. Um, I'm sure you recognize them and they are exactly what everyone said. It's the mousetrap pointless contraption to do a very simple thing. Um, little did Rube Goldberg know, but he was setting the stage for an entire world of memes and creativity and craziness on, the, on YouTube. Um, if you've never seen any of these, simply look for Rube Goldberg machine, you'll find uh, machine after machine after machine of uh, people leveraging their creativity. Now, the neat thing is, is these are often used in STEM courses. They're often used in all kinds of creative ways, especially in the K-12 space, uh, where you challenge um, students to create bits and pieces of these crazy contraptions. So with that in mind, this is my course. Uh, we teach in a unique format. Um, the course, because it's about storytelling, we try to teach it um, kind of as a story. And we do a lot of role play and creativity 
uh, within that space. It's organized as a prologue, act one, two, and three, and then there's an epilogue at the end instead of modules. We do a lot of playful things like that. Um, the students have this bank of activities they can do where they get to pick, I'm gonna do something with audio, I'm gonna do something with data, I'm gonna uh, do all kinds of different creativity oriented maker-based things. Um, our popular one, and I'm gonna give everyone a link to this, you can look at it, play with it, see how we did it, all that good stuff. Um, but we came up with the Zoom Goldberg machine, which is basically creating this wacky, crazy contraption on a Zoom call. We're all stuck at home and everyone is stressed out, needs to, to release some steam. And we got the inspiration actually, and this is the actual assignment that uh, I was given to students. And students can pick or choose, they can opt in or out of these things, no one's forced to do anything. But we got, we got inspired and we explained it even in, in the assignment by this TV show called Mythic Quest. Does anyone know Mythic Quest? It's on Apple TV, it's about a game development company. So right in the middle of the pandemic, they did an episode where they created, they were all stressed out and freaking out through the pandemic, and they decided to try to do a synchronous Zoom Goldberg machine over video conferencing. And so we shared that out as inspiration. Wait, what? Go, 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 go. Oh, shit. hundred percent we said let's do that and we challenged the students as one of their small weekly assignments to on their own zoom or on their own video camera to create one little segment of a zoom goldberg machine and we spelled out the requirements here some basic stuff you can only use household items we recommend you use like an orange basketball a roll of paper towels all that kind of stuff Generally, we hope it rolls left to right uh, and gave them some options. You can be in, you can show your face or not, um, all those kinds of things. They recorded their own videos and down at the bottom here, we have, all they had to do was drop it into this. We set it up so they could just drop the folder into the, drop the video into this folder. We collected them by a certain date and then me and my TA basically edited, edited it all together into our own version of what Mythic Quest did. And at the end of the course, it was like our capstone celebration because everyone kept asking, is it done? Is it ready? And I think the big benefit of this was it wasn't a hard assignment for them, honestly, but in a time of, of high stress and, and difficulty for all of them, I, you know, I've never seen a group get more lit up about a simple thing than this silly little project. And they just, clamored to see the final product, um, which I'll show you now. It's not near as polished or not an actual TV show, but, um, but the fun is there. And I hate seeing myself, but there it goes. Hey, the big day has finally arrived. Uh, our Zoom Goldberg machine project culminates on this very day. You know, timing is critical. Um, everyone has their place. Everyone has their contraption set. Sean, you know, we're starting with you. Brittany, it will conclude with you. Everyone has to trigger at the exact right times. Timing is everything. We're gonna wait for Paul's cue. He has he has a, a bullhorn, a whistle thing. Hey Brad, I ended up going with with something different. I don't. I didn't. Paul's not a TA. Also, the video editor. Done this. 
So I'm gonna <laughs> use this to start it this time. Um, so at the sound of this, the end of this, um, everyone make sure you're ready. It looks like everybody's pretty much in place. I think, I think we're good. Um, yeah, it looks like everyone's good. Okay, so at the sound of this, we'll start it. One, two, three. Hello, and thank you for joining me for today's Zoom Goldberg show. these students are classroom teachers and you'll notice that some of them did this in their actual classroom with their actual students in their school. I'm not going to make you watch the whole thing, but I'll get to a certain point and drop it. You get the gist of it. Um, that's the Zoom Goldberg machine. It was really a lightweight assignment for them. They had to do a little bit of video production, but it lended itself to our course. Our course studies digital culture and, and remixing. And so that lended itself to our particular uh, topic in our course. And they basically needed to blow off some steam. And I've never had a group of students have more fun. And I'm near time, but that's the Zoom Goldberg machine. You, you did great, Brad. Here, a virtual high five. Can we do it? Where are you on the screen? Okay. Sure. <laughs> and, if you, and if you could please post the link in the chat so people can watch it in case it was kind of choppy. Um, I think you just see it on the students' faces, you know, that, that, that connection. It's, you can see them sharing their joy across time and space. I mean, I, I think it's just wonderful. Thanks, Brad. Sure. Um, we got two, we got two minutes before our next thing. Does anybody have like this zinger question? Because I know Brad's ready for it. Well, someone asked, why, why, why are these, these Rube Goldberg machines so appealing? Any idea? Huh. You know, I haven't studied it. I can't say other than it, it's just part of internet culture now. I think it's fun and, and uh, playful. In a nutshell. That's it. It's just, it's, it's, it's fun because it's playful. And it just brings joy and connection. I, I, I'll settle for that. And it's creative. I mean, people want to, basically, people want to say, see what I did. Look what I can do. Yeah. One yeah. of the neat outcomes of this was a, a lot of these folks are classroom teachers. And after the course was over, I was getting, I got at least three emails and videos of them doing the same exercise with their own students in, in a K-12 setting. And it just kind of it lit them up because they could suddenly see that even if we're remote, we can do some creative and playful things together. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I mean, I think it's the thing. It's even remote. It just brings people together. Mm -hmm. For me, I, I think it's like things that aren't designed to work together, working together, and that gives me a sense of like hope, like <laughs> like we can make things work together that aren't built necessarily for that purpose. Yeah, totally. Well, it's it's a great it's a great model for just what we mean by play in terms of hope and connection and joy and discovery and you know effort. So so thanks so much, Brad.